Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Thanks for tuning in. So, we just solved that crazy elevator fourth floor puzzle, crawled into the secret room, found some insane evidence about Hugh Speck, about George Patrice, um, about Michael McGrath, and we've just popped out and we're just gonna head out of here. So let's do it. This is it. Time to get myself up there. I pushed the button for the roof. Because we are gonna go to the lighthouse! Oh my god, but I mean, is it inside the lighthouse? Is it what the lighthouse is pointing to on the roof? Because, you know, I, I it was pretty suspicious from the very beginning, I suppose. Huh? Somebody's here! <gasps> oh! Wait! We turned it on by doing that? Whoa! So has it like not been lit this entire time because it requires a mega specific button to turn it on? Wait, wait, what does this mean? Is it gonna shine on a very particular part? Is that condor? I see it. I see the condor shadow on the ground where you, you probably have to stand at a specific angle. What's happening? The light is on in the lighthouse. So where the beak is pointing, I guess, is where we're gonna find something. Is it under a very specific tile and we just, we just never knew? Yeah, look at that. What? So, um, obviously this, this, uh, shadow is very- wait. What? There's a shadow being cast on the brick wall thanks to the light from the lighthouse. Is it literally just where it's- What? What? There's a whole- wait, but this brick, like, the color is so out of place. There's no way nobody- I feel like that would make it obvious. They should make it the same colored brick. The surface of the brickwork is slightly dirty. Strange. This brick looks newer than the others. Yo, no way though. How do I break this properly? Okay, I'm just wildly tapping it. <gasps> Yo, what? It's not even scarlet. It's not even scarlet. It's white. That's... Uh... <laughs> what? We found it. I've got it. This is it. The Scarlet Star. What? Wow, it's so crazy to finally have it in our hands. This doesn't feel real. We've been talking about it this whole time, searching for it this whole time. What? Yo! I finally got my hands on the Scarlet Star. The coldness of the beautifully shining jewel spreads through my hand. Item. Locate the Scarlet Star, which disappeared at Hotel Cape West 25 years ago. So... This is the thing you've been searching for, is it, Will McGrath? And with it comes the truth of what happened all those years ago. Yo! <gasps> now we flash back to the cutscene from the very beginning of the game and we know the context of it now. That's the, that's the safe deposit box that we found that was empty when we opened it. My dad made a promise with Frank to enable him to leave his shady past behind. He snuck into the manager's office, cracked open the safe, and stole the Scarlet Star. He was then supposed to go to the window. The last window he ever saw! The last window! Oh, It takes on a new meaning now, because before the meaning was like... You know, the window was important because it was the sight that we saw as a kid that, that anchored us and gave us a sense of belonging for the first time after... His, his dad's passing, and now this was the last window he ever saw. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I signal to Frank using his flashlight. But the response to the signal never came. Then Michael McGrath arrived on the scene, and he shot and killed my dad. Yo! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no, don't do this to me. All the photos of them growing up and him as a kid. No, don't do this to me. No, game, don't do this to me. Oh. Maybe when he died, he was clutching this very thing in his hands. My grip on the Scarlet Star tightens as I think of my dad's dying moments. The jewel gradually starts to grow warmer in my hand. It feels as though the stone is transcending the 25 years since it was held by him. 
bringing us together again. As I dwell on this, I feel a warm, melting kind of sensation from it. <sighs> Looks like I'll be fulfilling the requirements of that order after all. Time to give this to the one person left who bears responsibility for Kathy's death. Oh, oh, huh? Oh, who? I'm scared. I'm scared. That was really loud. Who is it? Who found us? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew that we were here? Who knew that we found it? <gasps> the elevator opens and somebody emerges. Is that? Oh, 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 M Max. Oh, <gasps> Mr. Hyde. I assume I have you to blame for switching the lighthouse on, do I? Yeah, I did it all right. Then I must also assume that you entered that room. What? Just how did you know that there was a switch inside the room in the first place? What happened to you not even knowing where that place was? I apologize, but I lied. Huh, yeah, wait, why though? To get- she knew of it, though. Naturally, I was aware of what the room contains, too. So she must have known where the Scarlet Star was? So, wait, what? Oh my god, wait, 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 Mags, what's going on? If you knew about the hidden chamber, why did you need to lie? Let's just say I had no intention of discussing my knowledge of that room with anybody. But I breathed a sigh of relief when I decided to sell off the building. Safe in the knowledge that the secret would disappear once the building is demolished. I suppose, looking back, I was hoping for a little too much. I never imagined you'd take to snooping around and looking into the building's past. Then, Mr. Hyde, when you came round looking for information, I thought to myself, I can't keep hiding it if he's found out this much. What? So I had to decide. On the one hand, I could leave while everything was still shrouded in secrecy. Or, I could risk letting everything come to light. It was essentially a gamble. What do you mean, a, a gamble? A gamble to see if you'd be able to find that room or not. So, you gambled everything on me and whether I'd find it? Precisely. And it seems it ended just as I expected. So, maybe in a way, she was like trying to give us a challenge but at the same time she she was still at the bottom of her heart hoping that we would solve it so that she could be free from the burden of all of this and she's gonna be she's gonna be, be thrown in jail though right because she knew of all this and she hid it all so she was aiding and abetting a criminal and so when she stood in court and defended him you know she was lying so i guess maybe she is ready for her penance i i don't know what were you trying to hide? The crimes that he committed, of course. His time as a Condor's- as Condor's ringleader, the stolen jewelry and illegal sales, not to mention keeping it all under the LAPD's radar despite one of them being involved. And lastly, the unfortunate killing of Kathy. The crimes committed by George here in this very building. They needed to be kept hidden. All of them. And I intended to do just that. I was planning to take these truths with me to the grave. But, as we can both see, that proved futile. So, 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 wait, wha what's, what's, what's the plan now? How did you think it would end? I was fully aware that there was little hope I'd keep everything secret. I knew that if anyone could find that room, it would be you. So, you appreciated what was at stake should you lose your gamble? Yes, but... As soon as we started talking about the secret room, my mind was made up. If you found the room, I would lose my gamble, and then I'd need to let you in on everything I knew. If you failed, however, then I wouldn't need to talk to you on the subject any further. Then, my gamble would have paid off. So, she's ready. She's ready to- she's ready to do it. What made you think- what made you think I'd find it? I knew it would take a focused individual, and you more than fitted that description. I could see it in your eyes. Damn right I'm focused! You don't think I'd waste my time looking around this place without a good reason, do you? No, of course not. I was truly surprised when you came to me and told me what you knew about 25 years ago. The fact that the safecracker, Michael's shot, turned out to be your father. 
I doubt anybody could have anticipated that one. Yeah, what are the odds, huh? Maybe I knew, Mr. Hyde. Even as you arrived at my room today, I knew what was going to happen. Somewhere deep down, I must have realized that you would uncover the whole thing. Tell me something, Mr. Hyde. Have you found everything you were looking for? Yeah, I think I have. Michael's 13-year-old diary, the proof that connects LA the LAPD and Condor, even the Scarlet Star. I've... I've uncovered them all. You found the Scarlet Star? Certainly did. Michael McGrath left something, some helpful clues behind. They led me to the hidden chamber and helped me get in. I have it now. Is that so? Here, take a look. So, this is the Scarlet Star. Sure is. Your late husband didn't take the disappearance of it lightly and killed Kathy as a result. The Scarlet Star going missing was where this horrible ordeal began. Not quite Condor's theft of the Scarlet Star in the first- Wait, oh, not quite. Condor's theft of the Scarlet Star in the first place is where it really happened. Really started, I can't read. If George Patrice were still alive, I'd be showing the thing to him, and we'd be having a very frank chat about his crimes. I'm sure you would. But as he's no longer with us, that will never happen. True. The same with Michael. You can have this back now, Mr. Hyde. What? I was only concerned with keeping it hidden, not keeping it for myself. Wait, what are we gonna do with it? Since you found it, you've earned the right to keep it. In fact, everything you found is as good as yours. The room and all its contents. Which, by extension, means that disposing of it all also falls to you. And y you're sure about this? I am. I understand. Okay then. I suppose it's time for me to tell you everything. Wow, she's she's resolved herself. This is it. This is it. Will you listen to what I have to say, Mr. Hyde? All of it. Will you let me tell you about my foolishness and loving an evil man? Oh, wow. Here we go. I first met him when I was 19 years old. Wow, okay. Oh, look at them! They hit they, their art is so good. I was a dancer back then, and he was part of a band. I knew from the start that he was a bad person because he played the saxophone. He brought a different woman with him each time and used to keep dubious company. Oh, damn, dude! Despite all this, I fell for him. But as soon as we began to live together, something became very apparent to me. I knew that I'd need to get used to dealing with times I loved him and times I detested him. The strangest thing was, the more I became accustomed to the jealousy I felt, the more my desire toward him grew. It was a very strange position to be in. When he started dipping his feet into the world of crime, I began thinking that I needed to know everything he was involved in. So, yes, before you say it, by keeping his wrongdoing secret, I became an accomplice. The feeling of guilt that arose from all the crimes was what chained us together. But, inevitably, that wasn't a strong enough bond to keep our marriage alive. He became more and more distant from me as his feelings faded. Until, finally, I could see there was no hope for a future together. Oh, Mags! Oh my god. Eventually, he and Kathy went on to betray me and Michael. Despite having full knowledge of their intimacy, there was no fuss made. I... I was perfectly content to just sit back and watch now that my feelings had subsided. But after Kathy was murdered and I saw the taunting smile that appeared on his face as he told me that I was going to have to keep one more secret, I finally started to realize that I'd made a grave mistake. I was partly responsible for the man he'd become. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself, Mags. 
It came to me in a flash. I was the only person who'd be able to put an end to his misdeeds once and for all. It's never anybody's responsibility to be responsible for another person's actions. You don't blame yourself. This is all him, girl. And so, on that day, I... I planned to shoot him, using his own gun. But as it turned out, I wasn't to become a murderer that night after all. Somebody else had crept in, pointed a gun, and shot George instead. Wait. Oh! Okay, wait, hold on, okay. It was none other than his friend, Michael. When the deed was done, he looked me in the eye before striking me down with the gun. I woke up after being out cold. The first thing I noticed was that the gun that shot George was grasped in my right hand. Okay, okay, the supposed robbery. Okay, understood, understood. With the now lifeless body of my husband laid out before me, he had died with the most atrocious look of pain across his face. One thing went through my mind as I stared at his dead eyes. Enough. He had gotten nothing short of what he deserved for the crimes he committed. I made one final promise to his agonized face then. I vowed that I would keep his secrets even after his death and not tell a soul. But why though? I mean, part of it could be self-serving in that, you know, she'd be an accomplice to all of his crimes, but... But why though? I intended to take those secrets with me into the next life, but... From then on, I very much felt like a ship lost at sea with no lighthouse to guide me home. I drifted aimlessly in the darkness, tossed endlessly by the waves. You know what happened after that. <laughs> I was arrested and held on suspicion of murder. I eventually faced that grueling trial. Despite my predicament, I remained silent and told the police and lawyers nothing. Do you know why I chose not to reveal the truth, Mr. Hyde? Did you still have feelings? Well, I'll tell you. I wanted them to find me guilty. That's why. I felt it was only fitting. After all, I was fully intent on extinguishing George's life myself that night. But it seems that greater powers than my own were at work then. Somehow, the court found me innocent of the crime, and the money I inherited from George enabled me to buy the hotel. Part of the reason I snapped this place up was to maintain the secrecy, but I also felt that if I lived here, the lighthouse would be my guide and help me traverse the waves and survive the darkness. Looking back, maybe I was just clinging on to my foolish ideals. But the fact remains, I failed in my attempt to keep what he did secret. And that brings us right back to here and now, where I'm telling you everything. And that's the end, Mr. Hyde. There is no more. I expect you're overwhelmed with anger at this foolish woman's confession, am I right? I really wish I hadn't needed to tell anybody what I've told you. You're kidding, right? I beg your pardon! Surely you've been wanting to offload this entire thing onto somebody for years. I mean, keeping all this pent up for so long and all, you must have been dying to tell anybody who'd listen. Mr. Hyde... I... I... I admit it. You're right. I've been languishing in my guilt for what seems like an eternity. I just couldn't see it through to the end. I know I made the decision by myself, but... I just wanted to put my love for another ahead of my own feelings. I never thought doing so could lead to this much turmoil. It's true. I've been feeling like this for quite some time now. I desperately wanted someone I could sit down and talk to. Uh, 
Oh no, Max! Max! Oh wait, she's crying! Oh, she's crying! Oh, I thought she was experiencing the headache! Oh no, oh my, I'm feeling so emotional right now! Oh, you guys! Okay, okay. Holy cow! <laughs> it's been so horrible! <laughs> As I stare at Mags crying her eyes out, I think to myself, there must be so many people around the world forced to keep burdens on their own. And one thing's for sure, I'm one of them. Knowing the truth behind my dad's death, and uncovering the hidden deeds behind it. It still doesn't go far to erase the unbearable things I have going round in my mind. I understand the pain she's feeling. I really do. Now, she's in front of me in tears after telling me everything. After spending all that, that time keeping an unbearable truth to herself. The more she cries, the easier the burden will become. Though it'll never truly disappear. I suppose the least I can do is wait quietly here. Till she's done crying. Oh, Max. <laughs> oh. Mrs. Patrice. If you stay here much longer, you're gonna catch your death. Here, I'll help you up. Thank you, but I'm fine, Mr. Hyde. I can stand on my own. I have never needed anybody's help, and I have no intention of changing that now. Mag stands up, and I notice that there are no longer any tears in her eyes. Her eyes are now fixed on the light bursting forth from the lighthouse. We just stand and stare. Silently, we gaze up at the lighthouse. Soon, we'll be leaving this lighthouse behind, forever. I wonder if it'll be okay without me. If I wonder if I'll be okay without it to guide me through the darkness. Mags continues to mutter things to herself. I'm unable to respond. I just continue staring up at the lighthouse without saying a word. Oh. Y'all, I'm all choked up right now. I'm all choked up right now. I'm so emotional. She's been bearing so much alone for so long. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I just- it's- it's so overwhelming. I'm just- I'm just sitting in my thoughts, sitting in my feelings. She just went through so much. Y'all, it is the end of the episode. I know this is the end, but I just feel like the epilogue is gonna take a really long time, and I feel like I- I- I gotta call it for- for today. So, we're gonna have to save what I assume to be the rest of the story for the next episode. Oh my god. <sighs> What do I do with all these feelings? She's been through so much. She obviously is not... She's not an innocent person by any means. She's not. She willingly, you know, aided and abetted, but... You know, he was such a horrible guy, and... And she was in love, and then, and then she didn't know what to do, and then she felt responsible for his bad deeds, which, no, she shouldn't have, and... Ugh... I'm so emotional. Oh my god, this game is too good. This game is too good. Okay. Join me next time for the rest of the story, I think, maybe. I'll see you then. This is Axis, over and out. <laughs>